Hey, today we're going to cover the five tasks that make up the submodule DNS in detail, which is part of the web fundamentals path on TryHackMe. And we're going to get straight into it. So on TryHackMe here, we have these different learning paths. Eventually, we're going to cover all of them. This one's web fundamentals down here at the bottom. You go in, you look a little bit, a little bit more. We're starting out here at the beginning, how the web works, DNS in detail. So DNS in detail is really good. It is free. And TryHackMe has a video to discuss this lecture, which is very nice of them. And just task one, what is DNS? And uh, you don't forget there's an audio transcript for this entire lecture at the end of this video. So you can read this, but you can also just listen to it as well. So DNS stands for domain name system. This is not really a spoiler because the answer is right there. Domain hierarchy. We're going to talk about TLDs, top level domains, second level domains, subdomains. If you want to some information about like subdomain takeovers, um, we can talk about that a little bit. Task three, record types. We're just going over the different DNS records. If you've ever tried to set up your own website or something, you always need the A record, text record, text record. If you use Cobalt Strike, that's typically where the uh, DNS callback is. It's posted to the text records. Task four, making a request. Now this is cool because now we're actually starting to walk through like what happens when you make the DNS request, which is pretty important, especially for some of those other attacks like the subdomain takeovers. How does that kind of stuff work? And how can we you know, eventually defend against it. Task five is practical. So they wants us to use the web website on the right to build requests to make DNS queries. Okay, so for the first one here, it wants the C name of the shop.website.thm. You see the answers in here already. That's because I'm on a, when I recorded it, I actually wasn't recording it. So we want C name and with the subdomain, which is shop. DNS requests, we get here shops, myshopify.com. Okay, so what is the text value, or what is the value of the text record of the website THM? So we want text, website, so we want text.thm, send DNS requests. There's a flag. So when I was talking about Cobalt Strike earlier, this is kind of similar. This is where it would put like the payloads and stuff for their DNS callback. At least it was when I used it. Okay. And what is the numerical priority value for the MX record? Let's test MX. So we want NS lookup type MX mail exchanger. And that is 30. Okay, so when we're looking at the answers here and we see this, okay, there's the value. Now, the lower this number is, the higher the priority. So if there were other mail exchangers that maybe had like a value of 29, they would say, hey, you should use that one over this one. What is the IP address for the A record of the websites? Let's go and clear this out. So we want the A record of... Now, see, here's the interesting thing here. Um, you see, it's, so it's asking for www. There we go. So it's asking for, what is the IP address for the A record of www.website.thm? Now, keep in mind, www technically is a subdomain, right? So we need A, the subdomain. Check it out. It's quad tens. 10, 10, 10, 10. And that is done. Now, I'm okay doing the answers on screen for this because it's all right here right so some everything that we would want would be just right here we got to go look it up you know i did make a a quick detour to look up like the priority value of the mail exchanger record because i didn't really see it covered in here maybe i was wrong maybe it's in the video but i wanted to understand at least that answer so so before the audio transcript for this starts where you can hear every piece of text that's on here on the screen right now if you want to listen to that as opposed to reading it all and maybe listen to it as you're on like a walk or something you can do that 
Before the audio transcript starts, if you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful, or you want to be notified when other videos like this come online on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Task one, what is DNS? DNS provides a simple way for us to communicate with devices on the internet without remembering complex numbers. Much like every house has a unique address for sending mail directly to it, every computer on the internet has its own unique address to communicate with it called an IP address. An IP address looks like the following 104, 26, 10, 229, four sets of digits ranging from 0 to 255 separated by a period. When you want to visit a website, it's not exactly convenient to remember this complicated set of numbers, and that's where DNS can help. So instead of remembering 104261029, you can remember tryhackme.com instead. Task 2 Domain Hierarchy, TLD. A TLD is the most right-hand part of a domain name. So, for example, the tryhackme.com TLD is Tom. There are two types of TLD, GTLD and CCTLD. Historically, a GTLD was meant to tell the user the domain name's purpose. For example, a com would be for commercial purposes, org for an organization, edu for education, and dao for government. And a CCTLD was used for geographical purposes. For example, ka for sites based in Canada, .co.uk for sites based in the United Kingdom, and so on. Due to such demand, there is an influx of new GTLDs ranging from online, club, website, biz, and so many more. For a full list of over 2,000 TLDs, click here. Second level domain. Taking tryhackme.com as an example, the Tom part is the TLD and TryHackMe is the second level domain. When registering a domain name, the second level domain is limited to 63 characters plus the TLD and can only use a Z0-9 and hyphens. Subdomain. A subdomain sits on the left hand side of the second level domain using a period to separate it. For example, in the name admin.tryhskme.com the admin part is the subdomain. The subdomain name has the same creation restrictions as a second level domain, being limited to 63 characters and can only use a Z0-9 and hyphens. You can use multiple subdomains split with periods to create longer names, such as jupiter.servers.tryhskme.com, but the length must be kept to 253 characters or less. There is no limit to the number of subdomains you can create for your domain name. Task 3 DNS Record Types DNS isn't just for websites though, and multiple types of DNS record exist. We'll go over some of the most common ones that you're likely to come across. The records. These records resolve to IPv4 addresses. For example, 104.26.10.229. AAA record. These records resolve to IPv6 addresses. For example, 2606.47020.681a b5. CNAME record. These records resolve to another domain name. For example, Try Hack Me's online shop has the subdomain name store.tryhskme.com, which returns a C CNAME record shops.shopify.com. Another DNS request would then be made to shops.shopify.com to work out the IP address. MX record. These records resolve to the address of the servers that handle the email for the domain you are querying. For example, an MX record response for tryhackme.com would look something like altum.spmx.l.google.com. These records also come with a priority flag. This tells the client in which order to try the servers. This is perfect for if the main server goes down and email needs to be sent to a backup server. TXT record. TXT records are free text fields where any text-based data can be stored. TXT records have multiple uses, but some common ones can be to list servers that have the authority to send an email on behalf of the domain. They can also be used to verify ownership of the domain name when signing up for third-party services. Task 4 Making a Request What happens when you make a DNS request? When you request a domain name, your computer first checks its local cache to see if you've previously looked up the address recently. If not, a request to your recursive DNS server will be made. A recursive DNS server is usually provided by your ISP, but you can also choose your own. This server also has a local cache of recently looked up domain names. If a result is found locally, this is sent back to your computer and your request ends here. If the request cannot be found locally, a journey begins to find the correct answer, starting with the internet's root DNS servers. The root servers act as the DNS backbone of the internet. Their job is to redirect you to the correct top-level domain server, depending on your request. If, for example, you request www.tryhskme.com, the root server will recognize the top-level domain of Tom and refer you to the correct TLD server that deals with Tom addresses. The TLD server holds records for where to find the authoritative server to answer the DNS request. 
The authoritative server is often also known as the name server for the domain. For example, the name server for tryhackme.com is kip.ns.cloudflmre.com and numa.ns.cloudflmre.com. You'll often find multiple name servers for a domain name to act as a backup in case one goes down. An authoritative DNS server is the server that is responsible for storing the DNS records for a particular domain name and where any updates to your domain name DNS records would be made. Depending on the record type, the DNS record is then sent back to the recursive DNS server where a local copy will be cached for future requests and then relayed back to the original client that made the request. DNS records all come with a TTL value. This value is a number represented in seconds that the response should be safe for locally until you have to look it up again. Caching saves on having to make a DNS request every time you communicate with a server. Task 5 Practical Using the website on the right, we can build requests to make DNS queries and view the results. The website will also show you the command you'd need to run on your own computer if you wish to make the request yourself.